Bakugo wakes. For the umpteenth time this week, he feels a quick confusion about the spaciousness and coolness of his bed. There's a knock on his door. He doesn't answer, but Mina comes in anyways. Fuck off, I'm asleep. Bakugo bites, turning away from the door. Since when do you fucking knock anyways? Captain, I think you've made a huge fucking mistake. She says. She's said it a hundred times, but Bakugo can tell she's close to exploding. Monoma could be replaced. You goddamn know that's not what I mean. She has the audacity to walk in and sit next to him. Bakugo sits up, if only to get his dick further away from her fury. He scowls. That fucking noble was a danger to us all. We couldn't get any use out of him, so we had to go. Mina is shaking her head, and Bakugo can see that her anger is barely contained. He wanted to leave anyways, Bakugo says, looking away. It's for the best, he thinks. Bullshit. Mina says. She slams her hand down onto the bed over and over. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. You fucking Captain... No, Kotsky. What in the ever-living hell are you doing? I told you. What are you so goddamn afraid of? Mina shouts at him. What is it? God, you've had one shitty fucking run of a life, and you went and made a mess of that beautiful boy, and somehow, by some saintly fucking blessing, he fell for you. A shitty, rude-ass pirate. And you fucking throw him away? Nah, Kotsky. What the fuck is wrong with you? Bakugo blinks, taken aback. He feels weight crush in on his chest, and he opens his mouth to shout, to lie, to let the anger he so easily relies on spew from his lungs, but instead... He intakes a breath, holding it against a wavering sob. He shuts his eyes tight and breathes out sharp through his nose to compose himself. I don't want him to get hurt, Bakugo says. I, I keep fucking dreaming that I'm killing him, Mina. Like All Might and fucking Deku and... That's not your fault, Mina says. You say that. But I still fucking feel it, okay? I wasn't fucking good enough, and now... Now... Mina interrupts, still angry. You expect me to believe you did all that for him? Since when have you ever been so charitable? You fucking kick Kirishima noble boy flaming red hair off of our ship to fend for his own in the middle of fucking nowhere. He's too nice. He's probably dead or worse at this point, and all because your selfish ass is afraid of getting hurt again. You're not protecting Hiroshima, you're protecting yourself. It's pathetic, Kotsky. Bakugo wants to yell at the truth of her words laying raw on his heart, but he can't. Of course, yes, he was afraid of hurting Hiroshima. But he was afraid of failing most of all. Failing to protect, failing to be enough. All he can do for a moment is sit, numbed by the reality of his own cowardice. Mina breathes in deep and puts her rough hand over his. Listen, I know. I know you're afraid. That doesn't mean you're weak, just because you have emotion. Yes, it makes you vulnerable. But what makes someone strong and what makes someone brave is when they decide to love in spite of it all. If you want to be better, if you want to be stronger, if you want to be a king, then you have to order me to turn this ship around and find him before he's long gone. She's right. She usually is when it comes to Bakugo. It feels like an eternity before he can move again to nod his head. When he does so, a sudden new panic sets in. Will he? Mina stands. I don't know. You fucked up real bad, Captain. He's a nice boy, but you're a real piece of work. Bakugo sets his jaw and nods. It's true. He's fucked up a lot in his life, and it eats away at him. It overtakes his dreamless nights and makes him feel insane. But if he's fucked this up too, at least more than he already has, 
He's sure it'll settle deep within his bones on a register different from anything else in his past. He mulls over in his mind what Kirishima would do. How far away he might be. He stalls, pacing around his room, not wanting to face his crew now that the order was sent for them to turn around. Mina was right. He was pathetic. It's fucking embarrassing. He's supposed to be goddamn fearsome, and here he is, changing his mind like the wind. He steps onto the deck and ignores the tense atmosphere. Saro gives him a thumbs up, and Bakugo clicks his tongue. Their enthusiasm at his decision could wait until after Bakugo finds him, until after Kirishima decides whether or not to forgive. At full speed, they'd only recover two or three days. Bakugo doubts the anxious knot in his stomach will settle anytime soon. Bakugo doesn't sleep. When he readies himself in the mirror, his face is haggard. He takes the ribbon he gave Kirishima and ties it around his wrist. He dons his best coat and finest hat and shaves his face clean. He doesn't think it does much to make him look better. As the port comes into view, Bakugo's heart thrums hard in his chest. It's early morning and a haze of fog drifts over the water. There's a certain chill that comes with the sea when the day is breaking cold. Soon the sun will rise and the clouds will part. The sun will swelter down. But for now, the weather rests beneath his skin like sadness. The docks are just coming to life, and Bakugo throws down the gangplank himself, walking fast without saying goodbye. He tosses his coins to the dockmaster and sets to asking for a boy with red hair. He thinks about Kirishima and what he'd do. He's a safe kind of person, and honest, too. He probably looked around the docks for work pretty quickly, offering labor in return for a place to stay. He asks the merchants one after one, as the day is heating up and he's well into the seaside town, though it's still well before noon. An old woman has the gall to ask for money in exchange for information. He pays her and she points a ways away to a tavern, and Bakugo makes his way. The bell rings overhead as he enters. Places like these seem sad in the morning, when there's no music and the light shows the stain and dents of the wooden floors and drunken men lay unconscious over the tables. There's a young lady clearing the bar. She doesn't look up at him when he speaks. Drinks cost double if you want them this early. Bakugo looks around. He doesn't see Kirishima, but he spies a set of stairs. This an in. Yeah. Her accent runs thick. Anyone in the rooms? Bakugo asks. A high-class kind of man. Red hair. Her eyes flicker to the stairs, and Bakugo's chest near bursts. He's been here, at least. I remember a fellow like that last night. She nods. The glass she's cleaning squeaks, and when she sets it on the bar top, there are still streaks around the middle. Real quiet. Did he leave? Bakugo asks. He always found Kirishima in a crowd. He stuck out, no matter how hard he tried to blend in with his crew. If he's found him now, though, still reasonably close to the port, it must be a miracle. The girl hums. Listen, lady. Bakugo near growls. He slams a few gold pieces onto the sticky bar. Did he leave? She eyes the coins. No. Bakugo is surprised at the answer. He was here. Kirishima was in the inn. He turns towards the stairs, but the lady reaches over the bar and catches his coat. It'll cost you more for the room number. If you go barging into my guest rooms, I'll be calling the police. Fucking- Bakugo huffs and digs out a few more coins to toss her way. He's in three. She says. Bakugo takes the stairs two at a time, and when he stands in front of the wooden door with a faded and peeling number three painted on the panels, he raises his hand and takes a breath. In asking to enter, he bears his humility and admits his mistakes. In his life, he takes and he takes without asking. He's a pirate. That's his job description. 
But now he has to ask for forgiveness, for a chance, all for love. He knocks loudly, knowing Kirishima is a heavy sleeper. He listens for movement on the other side, palms sweating like something fierce as he waits, his heart skipping a beat while he hears shuffling. Just a sec. Kirishima's voice calls. Bakugo clears his throat and steps back a bit. The doorknob jiggles and a lock slides away, and he intakes his breath when Kirishima stands in front of him. Looking more than worse for wear, eyes red-rimmed. He's hung over. Bakugo can tell. Kirishima looks at him. He just stares, and before Bakugo can speak, he's closing the door. Wait, Bakugo says, jamming his foot between the frame and the door. Listen. Why should I listen to you? Kirishima bites back fast. I don't have any more precious jewels, because if I recall, you took pretty much everything from me. He's angry. Of course he's angry. Bakugo grits his teeth at his own thoughts. I'll wait right fucking here until you hear me out. Bakugo says. Or I'll shout through the door, your pick. Kirishima huffs and opens the door again, crossing his arms. It's always on your terms, huh? He glares heavy and hurt at Bakugo. His pain settles into Bakugo's heart as guilt and pulls his shoulders down. Kirishima steps back and a movement on the bed catches Bakugo's eye. His stomach drops when he sees a woman, only half covered by her bed sheets, deep asleep. He stares for a second, jealousy creeping into his heart. He can't blame him, though. Kirishima looks back at her, and then to Bakugo, arms folded tight. I... Bakugo doesn't even know where to begin. Listen, I... I had dreams. Fucking nightmares. And you were there. And you were hurt. And it was because of me. I was... I was hurting you. Kirishima's face is blank, save for the hurt in his eyes. His words aren't registering but it's not Kirishima's fault when Bakugo is the one being incoherent. Bakugo drags his hand down his face, trying to sort out his thoughts. He's in a panic now, rushing to fix things, but not knowing what to say to make it right. The woman on the bed sits up, drawing his attention away for just another moment, and Bakugo looks away as she gathers her skirts and dress and runs out of the room with the sheet still around her, murmuring a thanks to Kirishima as she passes. I'm not going to wait here forever, Kirishima says. He starts to turn, but Bakugo catches his arm. He lets go quickly, though, when Kirishima sends him a glare that runs a shock down his spine. I don't know where to begin. I'm not fucking good with words. But Kir... Ugh. Ichiro. I'm... I'm sorry. Bakugo thinks he sees a flash of surprise over Kirishima's features, so he keeps going. I was having these nightmares, and they felt so real, it was... They really got to me. I kept dreaming that you were dying, and it was all because of me. Either I couldn't get to you in time, or I, I was the one hurting you. And then I'd wake up, and I'd be scared to fucking death that I'd be hurting you in my sleep, and... Bakugo intakes a breath working against the hot tears behind his eyes. He's always been emotional like that, though he had a better handle of it as he got older. Now, though, Kirishima was drawing it all back to the surface. I was fucking selfish. Bakugo slows down. Kirishima still looks pissed, but he's listening. I'm not trying to make up excuses or, or use my fucking past as a loophole, but... You're an idiot. Kirishima near shouts. It startles Bakugo. Kirishima huffs out a breath and runs his hand through his tangled hair. You're so goddamn selfish. You're right. You can't fucking decide for me what's gonna happen. You can't make me leave because you're afraid I'll get hurt. You don't own me. And if what you're saying was true, you would have tossed me off the ship. 
Every other day there's a pirate asking about where I'm from. The words crumple his pride, mostly because they're true. You're a coward. Kirishima frowns. Disappointment is added to his features. I was afraid of hurting you. I was. Bakugo tries to explain, but the words run redundant, and he knows it. I was afraid that... that I'd get hurt, too. Kirishima is crying. He's trying hard not to, tilting his face up and setting his jaw tight. Did you forget? Forget that I saved your life. God, you're an idiot. But I'm an idiot, too. There I was, thinking I was something special to you. Bakugo winces when Kirishima laughs. I thought you cared, Gotsuki. I thought you cared. Bakugo feels himself losing control of the situation, his chances slipping past his fingertips. He takes off his hat and brushes his fingers through his hair, trying to calm himself, trying to show his regret. I do care. God, Ijiro, I do. What I did was wrong. He says. His voice almost cracks. His voice is pleading. He's saying shit he'd never say to anyone else, pouring out his heart. At this point, if Kirishima could at least forgive him, he'd be grateful. I was wrong. I made a huge mistake. I shouldn't have decided for you, nor acted as your captain when I should have addressed you as... As my equal. I understand if you don't want to come back. Fuck, I don't even deserve that. I'm just trying to say that I've never really been sorry for anything in my life up till now. Kirishima steps towards him, and Bakugo expects him to throw a hit. He's ready to take it, not about to fight back when he deserves so, so much worse. He looks over Kirishima's handsome face, red and splotchy from his tears. His chest aches at the thought of losing him. The thought of never seeing him again. Never holding him. Never pressing kisses to his lips or burying his face into his hair. He's speaking before he realizes. His breath coming out in a quiet, soft rush. A sigh of affection as he stares into Kirishima's deep red-brown eyes. God, Ichiro, I love you. His confession hangs heavy in the air in front of him, a weight off his shoulders. He hopes Kirishima doesn't think he said his words in desperation. He just needs him to know, no matter if he decides to come with him or not. Kirishima's hands grip around his face, forcing their gaze to lock. He's staring into his very soul, livid and shaking. Bakugo waits for his head to be slammed back into the wall. Please... Bakugo whispers. He'd have thought the word to be bitter coming from his mouth, but he clings to it like a lifeline. Kirishima breathes out shakily, his breath fanning over Bakugo's lips. He glares down at him, cheeks streaked with tears. He kisses him. He forces their mouths together hard and backs Bakugo into the wall. He bites at his lips in anger, delves his tongue into his mouth. Bakugo can taste his tears. It's only when Kirishima pulls away that Bakugo realizes he's clinging to his shoulders like a lifeline. Like a sailor tossed overboard by some forceful embrace of the sea. Kirishima certainly brought a storm into his life, but by no means does Bakugo regret sailing through. He just hopes that he'll make it out alive, Kirishima by his side. Kirishima breathes heavy, pressing his forehead against Bakugo's. His eyes are shut tight, and he can almost see his mind spinning. I'm still mad at you, Kirishima says. He opens his eyes, full of pain and flecks of red. You're still an asshole. But Kotsky, I do love you. Bakugo's eyes widen, and he feels his cheeks flare up hot. He never entertained Kirishima saying it to him. Never thought about how he would react. It makes his heart squeeze and his skin shiver. He feels warm and nervous. His veins buzz with the rush of adrenaline from Kirishima's low, sincere voice. 
Kirishima looks surprised for a second, and his fingers reach up to brush across Bakugo's face, smearing wetness away. Oh, he's crying. You should hate me, Bakugo says, disbelieving. He wants to hide his teary face, but doesn't want to break Kirishima's gaze. I do, a little bit, Kirishima says. I'm probably an idiot for accepting your apology. Bakugo feels lighter with every second, and he lets a smile spread slow across his face. I'll prove you aren't. God, Ki- Ijiro. Ijiro, I'll make it up to you. Anything. Anything you want, I'll get it. Promise. Kirishima laughs. I just want you, you dumb pirate. I just want you. You have me. Bakugo says, honest. Kirishima touches his nose against his, soft. Say it again, Kotsky. Bakugo looks at him with every ounce of love he has to give, and he does.